Hi everybody, welcome to another Park Report podcast interview. This is Roy. My guest on this episode is Neil Morris. He's back to talk about the new band Neil Morris and the Residents and the album No Hill for a Climber, which comes out on November 8th. There's a first single out now called All the Rage. Got a chance to speak with Neil about the new band and album, upcoming Morris Fest, and a whole lot more. But before we get started, just a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel, wherever you get your podcasts, follow us on all our socials, and parkreport.com. Don't forget to check out our new progressive rock playlist on Spotify for music from Neil Morse and a whole lot more. And now my chat with Neil Morse. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the uh, the topic of the day. First of all, good to see you again. Looks like it's good to uh, see nice you. weather out there where you are. Yeah, it's lovely here in, on, my, on my porch in Nashville. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, you got a, a lot of stuff going on as always, man. You got, uh, well, I mean, earlier this year you released part two of the Joseph, uh, double, double albums. And yeah. then, uh, you've uh, been doing this workshop online. I know that's been going on and now you've, uh, put out, well, you're getting ready to put out this new album, uh, under Neil Morris and the resonance, no hill for a climber comes out on November 8th. Um, man, it's, it's, it's a fun album to listen to. And I think, I, I guess that's sort of what you were going for, right? To to sort of do what you do, but add some some freshness. So I guess you know you got a, a few young guys in there playing with you, and it sounds like it's a you know a fun a fun album, proggy, and all 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 the stuff involved. I mean, it's amazing. Um, but I want to ask you about. It. I know you've talked about it here and there and some. So, but I got to ask you a little bit. Um, sure. You know, Go back to before it started and the inspiration for, for putting this thing together. Yeah, I was looking out at 2025 and, uh, uh, you know, this was in, I'm sorry, I was looking at 2024 from right. 2023, right? <laughs> now I'm looking at 2025, but yeah. Um, uh, and I just did well, well, uh, what, what, what should I be doing? Lord, what do you have for me in 2020? And uh, I just didn't have any idea what I would be doing. I knew that, you know, I had this, uh, late bloomer album, uh, I had a, you know, a singer oh, that came out album. this year as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I had that. Uh, and you know, I was working on that, but, um, you know, I didn't have any progressive rock really uh, on my plate. Uh, with Mike being back with Dream Theater and being busy for probably at least two years, yeah. You know that that means that you know all of, you know NMB, Flying Colors, Transatlantic, like all that stuff be on hi hiatus because all that stuff is with Mike. So I was thinking, well what should I do? And I was kicking it around with my wife and I, I don't really want to do, try to do some big epic progressive rock album by myself. I just done the two Joseph albums pretty much by myself, you know, not, I mean, I had help, but it's kind of like I the houses myself. It's like, yeah, somebody came and helped for the concrete and I had some framers come in, but it was my thing, you know? Right. And it's, right. it's just a work and when you get done with one of those things it can be like wow i need a break so i didn't really want to take on something like that and i was thinking god I don't, I, i'd like to collaborate maybe with some people i don't know what would be fun. and my wife suggested some of the why don't you do something with some of these young local guys and i've always had this idea that uh, that it would be great like i'll read about uh, say read about the Beatles uh, when they were making albums. Paul would come up and say, "Hey, the song I'm really excited about. Can we meet at the studio?" You know, they all lived right around London. They all li they lived fairly fairly close to each other for a while there. Right. And I thought, wow, that wouldn't that be brilliant? It would <laughs> like while so you could strike while the fire is hot while you're really inspired. You could get everybody together, and so I always thought that would be a really cool thing to have in Nashville that I never really have had. And so that was part of my motivation was, uh, was that was to, you know, what about getting together some guys that are local? And I thought of the, you know, some of, uh, you know, Chris Riley and Andre and Philip, these are guys that I've played with like either in church or in some other capacity. And, uh, you know, uh, Martin's a guy who's done percussion at Morse Fest sure. for the last years. And, 
uh, Andre did the guitar, did a guitar solo on the uh, Joseph part one. He did the solo on uh, heaven in charge of hell. And they helped me do the videos. The guys you've seen in videos, you know, they're, oh, okay. they're friends right, of mine yeah. and they've been yeah. around. And so I thought, man, it would be cool to give them a, sh at a frontline release, you know? And uh, I'd heard some of Chris Riley's music. He's been in the radiant school. Uh, the, the, you know, the school thing that I've had here that's a week long. Um, he's been in most of those. And so I've heard from his music and I really, really like it. And we've become good friends. And so it seemed to make sense to bring him in. And um, some of the really coolest parts of the residents, uh, the No Hill album, are like we took sections of uh of Chris's demos, just like we were with Roy Nestold or something. There were there were times from the from the demos if the demo is really good. Sometimes we'll take the multi-track of the guy's demo and put it in our session and then play to it, transition in and out of it. And uh that we did that on uh, Eternity in Your Eyes. There's the two sections of Chris Chris Riley's that are really right. great, but anyway, yeah. So uh, obviously, when we when at the back to the beginning, the beginning was like, "Hey guys, would you like to do this? Yeah. Um, when can we get together? You know, let's get together and just play and see what happens." So that's how it started. So that video uh, that you have out now, the first single, All the Rage, is a little clip in the beginning where you guys are sitting down together and it looks like you're going to jam for the first time. Was that 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 first session? Was that just the, the, how it went? That was the that was you know, the first session. And, uh, you know, I love I love the sound that the sounds. It's like I was, I'm trying to run the sound into my camera from like a little headphone box. It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> I kind of I thought that was a great way to start that video because really it's it is a new band. It's it's for, for the for most of your audience, it's guys they don't know really, and so yeah. it was it was a cool way to do it. Like, hey, here's these guys. Here's how we met. You know, you're in on it. I thought it was clever. Oh, cool. Well, I'm glad. I wanted to give people some kind of context, and right. I actually I actually put that part of the video myself. I put, I did that in iMovie actually. <laughs> Chad clean Chad cleaned it up and put it right. you know he, he he made it better but yeah I'm I'm glad you like that yeah cuz like originally it just sort of came in with the music and here's these guys and I thought I don't know that's a little it needed something so I'm glad you liked it yeah um so really there was no audition thing I, I remember back when you did the before momentum i think that was the time when you sort of had auditions right and you had people send in i think that's maybe how you got eric gillette and and some people for that this was yeah. just really these are just guys you knew you, there was no real like process of sending out feelers for people right no uh there was for the singer um i tried to several different singers and I was really procrastinating, procrastinating, because I was hearing that these high vocals, particularly in No Hill for a, for a Climber, I was hearing that right. big end. Um, I actually heard the big ending before I heard the other part, but that was the main thing that I was, I knew it was headed to that. And of course, I can't sing like that. And uh, so I knew we needed somebody, but I was just like so involved in, you know, working with the guys and writing the stuff oh yeah gosh we need a singer and we were needing to deliver the album to be mixed in mid-may and towards the end of april we still didn't have anybody to sing that stuff. oh wow yeah it's crazy and then uh gabe klein gave me johnny's number and he was really enthusiastic and could come oh. over the next day and so uh we met and then he came over the week after and did all his he just sang an a yeah, I said, can you hit a high B? Can you sustain a high B? And he goes, oh, I'm like, okay, <laughs> show up next week. And <laughs> Here's the songs. Here's the music. I sent him the lyrics, the demos, and then he came in and killed it. How fun is that for someone like that? That's so cool, man. Yeah, uh, he's such a nice guy. too. It's really great that you, having accomplished all that you've done and work with everybody that you could think of to work with, I mean – Mike Portnoy, John Anderson, you name it. Um, 
that the, you you would be willing to collaborate with these guys and just let them in and write with them. I mean, what, at what you know, I wonder if it's sort of like a rookie on a football team, you know, getting to play with Aaron Rodgers or some, you know, somebody that's been there for a while who is like afraid of them a little bit and, you know, what if they have an idea, they don't know if it's okay to present it. I mean, is that does that happen in in this kind of case? If it did, I wasn't aware of it. I mean, I know these guys pretty well. Like we've played together in church or, uh, you know, uh, Phillips played it more. You know, I've Philip has also been a tag. So he's been on tour with me. Uh, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, I think we're pretty cool with each other, uh, you know. Uh, Andre and Chris, uh, you know, also, I don't know. It seemed pretty comfortable. And I didn't know if we were going to, if this was the right way to go. You know, I usually kind of, for any project, I generally put my toe in the wall first. You know, right. I test the waters yeah. in some way to see if this is what I feel like God wants me to do next. And uh, I could tell right after like the first time we got together that I, I, I felt like, yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. But it really, I have the album exceeds my stations. It's better than I really had dreamed. Uh, I'm just really, really very happy about it. Yeah. It also has, and you've written about this before, that it, it has sort of a Bridge Across Forever, Spock's Beard V kind of format, I guess, you know, book ended by two epics, some, some shorter songs kind of in the middle. Did you plan that out as, or things just sort of happen for you like they usually do to just write and that's what it ended up? No, it definitely just unfolded. You know, one of the great things, and I talk about this in the master a lot, uh, is discovery. You know, the the process of discovery is what it's all about. You know, I think that's what's great about relationships, you know, discovering things about people you've known for years. You know, I'm still, in a way, I'm still sort of learning and discovering my wife. And that's that's what makes it so awesome, right? And music, too, you're always discovering, what does this thing want to be? Because it's never the same way, right? You don't want it to be the same way twice. Uh, so a lot of discovery. Eternity in your eyes was originally just kind of a short thing that grew when the idea to add Chris Riley's piece. And then there was the other Chris Riley piece that came right after it. The first one's the Northern Lights section. And the second one, I don't know why I always, uh, oh, Hammer, Hammer and Nail is the name of the other. Hmm. Judas, Hammer, Nail in Hand, you know. Uh, right, right, right. Those are sections of his demos that I flagged and went, man, if we can use these pieces, I love these. These pieces are really cool. And he's actually singing those parts, right? The, that's him, yeah. him singing those parts too. So you actually have yeah. three vocalists on this thing, not not just you and Johnny. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And Chris has had such an interesting voice. I've all like, to me, he's like sort of the Neil Young of frog, <laughs> <laughs> but people don't really know that, but he, 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 you know what I mean? Like a really inch, totally unique voice. Right. Like he just doesn't, he just doesn't sound like anybody else. You know what? He actually doesn't sound the same in the different parts he sings throughout the album. That's the other thing. Like, I, I was listening to it and actually Jeff said, Oh, you know, that's him too. On that other song. And I, I didn't catch that, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's a unique artist. And uh, so it was just uh, really cool discovering. And then um, I think you'll appreciate this. So originally like eternity in your eyes was this, you know, pro thing that I had pretty much written. Um and then when it became this bigger thing, then we had Chris's two pieces sort of back to back. And I think I sent it to Jeff. And I think Jeff said, you know, those two vocal sections, like so close to each other, seems kind of odd. And that's the way it was. Uh, and then I went uh, out of town for a few days and I was into it. And I created that I'm in the middle. Like, you know, we need to solo a little bit, you know. You know 
some of my aggressive rock albums, if I have a criticism, is they don't like stretch out. Like you don't give like a player like like in Transatlantic, particularly like there's these spots where there's like extended solos that build that start really small and build. And I thought, man, we should have something like that in here. And so I I did a hard edit. I edited at the end of Chris's first piece, Northern Lights. And then I put in that jam and the little soft right. this guy, the reprise right of the chorus. And then and then phosphated into Chris's second song, which is Hammer and Nail. And that's when I felt like it became more of a whole piece. Of course, I that extended it by like six minutes or something. <laughs> so it was getting longer and longer. But no, I was in our original. Yeah. You know what I love is that nowadays, because of how vinyl is, um, everything's now a double vinyl and, you know, you, you can only fit so much on each side and everything. You're, you're often put in the position of having to split a song in, into – on one vinyl into parts one and two, which is just uh, sort of a yeah. funny thing, but it, you know, you have to figure out, okay, where am I splitting this song in half to, to, yeah. to start on the next side? Do, do you ever wonder about that? Like, Oh wait, we need to remember, we need to make sure we have a spot to break here. Cause it's going to have to be a side two. Yeah. I think about that now that vinyl is such a thing. I listen to vinyl a lot. I was thinking about that in No Hill. Like, where are we going to split it? We wound up splitting it uh, not where I was expecting to. I was thinking, I was expecting to split it after Chris's song. Right? I think so. Or maybe I was expecting to split it before Chris's song, and now we're splitting it after. Something like that. Right. It was because Rich said, oh, that means the that the first section was only, it was not as long as it needed to be. And so, uh, anyway, right. with the help of Mr. Mauser, we figured <laughs> out how to do it. It's a whole new, whole new dilemma when you're writing these things. It's funny. Um, what about, uh, I want to talk about uh, a Philip uh, who I didn't know really drum to be honest until recently when he started to do this for you. Um, how does someone, how does having him as a drummer after you've worked with Mike for, so many albums do you almost have to tell him don't don't be mike you know don't like remove any pressure of that type of thing and just you know what i'm saying or does he feel like i gotta you know i gotta try be mike portnoy on this thing how does that sort of work out with you guys i think i did say that i think i did tell him you know but it, it pretty much goes without saying i think everybody knows like i didn't need to tell Andre to not try to be Eric um you know they're they're pretty mature players these guys you know Andre's been touring doing some pretty major gigs around Nashville for years hmm. uh he's unknown in the prog world of course you know but these guys hold their own um it was they fun did a great you know job. The, no really the playing is great i mean it's absolutely the whole the yeah. whole album's outstanding there's really well, thanks. I'm yeah. I'm glad. I I was a little concerned. You know, you were always concerned. I I just didn't. I didn't want the guys to get hurt. I didn't want. I thought it'd be terrible. Like you know, because prog fans can be, they can be you know pretty critical you, sometimes. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> and I just didn't want them to come out and to be like, well, Neil's really taking a step down from NMB or whatever with these new guys. Um, and so, you know, I, but you know, what can you do? You can't live your life worried if people are not thinking you're living up to the thing that you did last, you know, that that's kind of a creative. I think as an killer. artist, that's always a challenge you deal with, right? Every artist has to, at some point decide, um, this is what I feel I have to do and, and write. And that's, yeah. I think and this if is your what, audience gets it, they'll, you know, they'll appreciate it. You know what I mean? And this is what I feel like I should do now. Whereas, you know, it would be more uh, safe and more lucrative for sure to, you know, to, to very quickly do another NMB if we could. 
you know. Right. But I was really glad as as the way the year is shaping up and doing these new projects, this one with the resonance, and then now this new thing with Chester Thompson and Phil Kagi. Um, you know, it's just like really, really different. You're, least, and, you're gonna have four albums out this year. That that's pretty. That's well, pretty remarkable. The Chester thing, I don't think will come out till the spring. That might be. It might be later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it'll definitely be later because we're not. We're still. I don't think it'll be. I don't think we we can deliver it until probably after Morse Fest, right? Because yeah, trying no, to so get then it, you're looking at vinyl pressing and all these different things that happen. Yeah, and we don't want to cram. I don't want to cram. I told Jerry, you know, it'd be great just for my own mind. I like to get one thing done before I do the next thing. I love to get all my parts done before I go on vacation, but. I'm not going to kill myself over it. <laughs> right. No, I told Jerry, Jerry, don't kill yourself over it. it. We all would love to have it off of our plates, you know, because mentally, you know, we're going to be going to Europe and, you know, we're, our minds are going to be all in Joseph. And you know what I mean? It, it, it's it, it, part of it's just a mental thing. It's like, it's hard to like date three women at once, you know, <laughs> just like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who's who? What's your story again? You know, uh, that's funny. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see. What I, we, well, we'll see what we can do. Well, speaking of more space, which you mentioned, um, that's coming up uh, in a couple of months in November. And you're, you're doing three, right? You got um, you got yeah. the one in Nashville, one in UK and then the one in, in Europe. And, yeah. Uh, in Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing uh, Joseph and you're doing uh, a Sorry, David Julia Morrison Jennings is also going to be playing. Is is yeah. that is that at all three, the the DMJ one? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, my vision for it is that I wanted to have one cast, and that's changed. Like normally, if when it was just Nashville, there's people that I could have drive in. There's people that I could just get for Nashville, but now mm -hmm. it's like, well, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do it pretty much the same in each place and uh it's it's a great challenge but man it's going to be killer i mean think about like we're going to have two smaller drum kits so nick can just go play and eric can play and come uh, play guitar and then nick can come back <laughs> out and lead singing and, oh my goodness it's gonna be wild yeah it, it's gonna be really good uh are tickets still available if if uh if people want to go or do we do we let i don't them know I don't know. Yeah, let them know. I mean, I know they're available in Europe and London. I don't well, know. If anybody if, watching uh, this has, uh, is still uh, trying to find a way to go to Morsefest, I guess go to uh, go to neilmorse.com and see if there's tickets still available. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, your waterfall streaming service because uh, yeah. you've been doing that now for a while. It's been going strong for a few years now. And yeah. And there's a ton of stuff on there. I'm just wondering, as as an artist, who I don't know of any artist that has something like this other than you, really. Um, what what are the challenges in that for you managing something like that? That has to be something different. Well, the challenge has been techno. Really, all it's all techie stuff, and finding uh, techie people that'll do their techie stuff. I mean, I can't right. do any of it, you know. So I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, we there's a there's a version two that has been in the offing for basically years, and it's been just a real challenge to try to get that going. But we are really close to testing. You know, there's just like a lot of hoops you got to jump through for all this kind of stuff. Like, oh, if you want, you know, Apple needs this thing for you to be in the App Store and. The, Right. You know, there's just a lot of hoops you got to jump through, but we're about to accomplish that. Accomplish that. Uh, it's great. God's been so good to us, and and the, the original, you know, the original app is still running. Has all the music you can listen to it. That's what I how I listen to my music is always on waterfall. Like I'm practicing for Morse Fest, and you know, it's so easy. I don't have to look for anything. It's right. on my phone, you know, so it's so convenient. You know, it's something that not, you know, most artists, if they have a, a career, they, if they put out 10 records over a career, that's, 
that's a good career, right? And and but that wouldn't be enough for a streaming service. <laughs> but you have you have so many albums and so many bands and offshoots and this, that, and the other thing. It really is there's enough there to 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 make it worth something. You know what I mean? Which is pretty remarkable if you really think about it. Yeah, well, there's all this. Yeah, there's all this box transatlantic. The, the, everybody's kind enough, you know, and and the label and Inside Out is and Frontiers are kind. Enough. Let me, uh, you know, because could say no uh so it's been it's also very much through the kindness of friends um but yeah uh, F- flying colors is on there and th- there's also things on there that you can't hear anywhere else you know rarities right. yeah very cool my well, entire for example my out as well my entire audio book Something else, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a ton. there's hours and hours and hours, hours. and there's hours. Like, of... I think there's 200 hours of material on there. Or some something, you know. It's that's crazy. pretty wild. That's amazing. Well, congrats on yeah. that and all your success and all the great music. We're always thrilled to talk to you, uh, man, and see you. And uh, you know, it's just been awesome to uh, always get new albums from you and new shows and everything. So um, I think people will really like this. No Hill for a Climber comes out. November 8th, Morris Fest is coming up. You got Waterfall. You got more albums in the future coming out. So you're busy, man. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of great things going on. I'm very, very thankful. Thank you, Roy. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. All right, man. Well, good talking to you. Have a great uh, rest of your day and uh, more interviews and more stuff coming up. We'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks, Roy. Have a good one. Take care. Hey, thanks for checking out the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on all our socials and progreport.com. And we'll see you all again real soon. Thanks.